Last night, both Channels 7 and 9, they had big programs on the Martin Place siege. To be honest with you, to be very honest with you, they are not shows that I really wanted to watch. You almost feel like there was a, a duty uh, as a person in Sydney or, or to a broader point, as, a, as an Australian, to be watching those shows. But it's not something that I wanted to watch. And to be frank, it was, it was not easy. And for that reason alone, I didn't watch all of it. I was flicking around between both seven and nine, and uh, I didn't watch the lot. I think there might have been a few people in, in the same boat. And the stories, their faces and their voices showed how incredibly difficult it would have been to live through and how difficult it is to live after that day. Every day for these people right now would be a struggle. There's been a lot made of Marcia McHale, a hostage paid by Seven to speak. She was critical of the police. She was very critical of the police. She said they treated her like a criminal and they should have called in the army. Her anger uh, and her tears are all pretty understandable. But there was one other thing that she said that I thought was incredibly unfair. I actually lost it when one of the phone calls that I made told me that the Prime Minister is a very busy man and he can't come to the phone. Who said that to you? Police or media or who was it? So they were the words they used? Yes. As you can understand, Marcia, the Prime Minister is a very busy man. I couldn't believe it. I was in disbelief. I yelled at him and I I think I actually said that um, I don't care what he's doing right now, whether he's walking his dog or he's, you know, playing golf with his mates. I'm sure there is nothing more important happening in Australia right now than this and the lives of the people in this cafe. And then I hung up. It was then that I knew that there was not going to be any negotiation and we were just left there. All right, look, there again, it's understandable the pain that she's going through and you couldn't expect somebody like that to be totally unreasonable, but I think that that, was, uh, that is grossly unfair towards both the police and the Prime Minister. There's a suggestion there that, that neither of those two, the, the police or the Prime Minister, cared at all. They didn't care. But listen to this. The, it's the nego- And the, by the way, the police aren't talking about it. The police say they will make no comment. You completely understand that. But this would have been the fear of the negotiators. OK, Man Monis was getting the hostages to ring up various media outlets and to call the police negotiators and say, I want a, an Islamic State flag and I want the Prime Minister on the phone right now. Now, imagine if it had have played out like this, that they said, we want to speak to the Prime Minister. Tony Abbott drops everything and picks up the phone and starts speaking to the hostages or to Man Monis himself, and then he said, OK, I want to deliver this message to you. I'm doing this for Allah or for whatever the hell else he wanted to say, and then he kills every person in that room. The negotiators would have seen that as a very, very real possibility. What's more, if the negotiator had have said to Marcia McHale, the Prime Minister is never coming to the phone, no matter what you say and no matter what this man holding you says, he is never going to come for the in he's never going to come to the phone. And then Man Monis grabs his gun and kills every person in the room. That is a very real possibility too. So they had to walk the middle ground and they had to say to those hostages, oh, something like, he is a very busy man or he might be able to come come to the phone or maybe. We're not sure. We'll have to see. There's no way they would have gone either way. They would have said, they would, no way they would have said, here's the Prime Minister, I'm putting him on right now, or he's never coming to the phone. They had to walk that middle ground because then the negotiators. The negotiators will not be able to speak. They will not be able to be interviewed. Uh, they will be there at the, the inquest, no doubt, the coroner's inquest, but they won't be able to speak and defend themselves. As I said, I can understand that Marcy McHale could jump to a, the wrong conclusion. Um, she's been through absolute hell and all of that is understandable. But it is just wrong for her to make that conclusion of the Prime Minister and of the negotiators that they they did not care. I know she's going through hell, but I just think it's a bit much.